I've been, yeah, I've been in this situation before. Yeah. And it, it was a very tough one. And the most painful part was, it, it, it wasn't something, for mine, I, I had a job. I was I was in the job already. I, I had I had it, I, I was working in a casino. Yeah, I had this job. And then the casino rules and regulations, when you don't go by them, you'll be sent out. Yeah, so what happened on my side was, um, I was the one to control the table, but I still have an inspector who would tell me, do this, do that. But then I was a trainee. Yeah, I was fresh then. And I didn't know how to go about things. So it was the inspector directing me, do this, do that. And I was doing as she was saying, because when you don't do it too and there's a problem, it all boils down to you that you didn't do the right thing when the inspector was instructing you. So that way you can be sacked. Yeah, so like I was saying, all that I was doing on the table, I was, I was naive then. Of course, I had been trained, but there were some rules and regulations that I wasn't familiar with. So she was directing me to do what I'm supposed to do. And then I did exactly as she said. But unfortunately for me, it was the wrong thing. She was actually trying to cheat. Yeah, the casino is about gaming. Yeah, so she was trying to cheat um, for the customer, for the company to lose. So at the end of the game, we were called to the office. And then, of course, we were guilty. So both of us were attacked. And then what happened was um, the issue was taken to one of the commissions, which I, I won't say the name, one of the commissions yeah, in Ghana here. And then when we went, the commissioner listened to my side of the story. And then I think he really felt for me. He, he felt sorry for me. So what happened was, OK, then I can talk to your manager and let him know that we are related. We are related. So to get back your job, you give me this. Yeah, you give me this, and then I will talk to them, and then they will pick you at the workplace. So that's what happened. And unfortunately for me, I had a lot of responsibilities. Yeah, this is what happened with me. I had a lot of responsibilities. So I had no option than to give in. I have no option than to give in. So yes, unfortunately I did. And then I had my job back. Yeah, so when you, when you, it, it's something, it felt some way, but yeah, it's, it, and it, it was, I wouldn't say that I regret though, but here I am, I can say this to advise people also. Yeah, so it, it, it's, it's, it's really happening. And that this issue I'm saying happened, um, Years back, no, I think uh, five years ago. Yeah, five years ago. So sexual exploitation of women on the job field is very serious. And I don't think as a nation, we voice it out enough. I mean, women get exploited on a daily basis on the job. Yeah, and it's, it's very bad. It's very bad. And... It has nothing to do with the appearance of a woman. I mean, when you're hiring a woman for a job role, you look at her qualification, you look at what she can do on the job. It has nothing to do with her appearance. So when I see people giving the excuses that, okay, her, her, her outfit was a bit provocative and all that, I'm like, no, it has nothing to do. Just employ the person. If you think the person is best fit for the role, for the job role you're advertising for, I'm speaking from personal experience. So, a few years back, I think around 2015, I was just down with my national service. And you know how desperate young graduates are when they are down with national service because you don't want to sit at home for your parents to feed you or for anyone to support you. So you want to get going and do something for yourself. So I got a call from a man. He was more, more or less like a family friend. And he was a branch manager in one of the big one of the big companies in Ghana. I'm not gonna mention the company's name. So he called me, he was like, Yo, I have a job for you. So come over to my office. I'm like, okay, this is good news. So I dressed up and I, I went to his office. I went and he was like, Okay, so my friend is is the manager of this new mineral water company. And they are now setting up their, their various departments in the company, like the operations, marketing, accounting. And he actually gave this my man a slot 
to bring an accounting person. So I was there and he called them that, okay, you gave me a slot, I have someone for you. He's, he's a business administration, he has second class upper, blah, 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 my, my qualifications. And they told him, okay, this and this date is the day for the interview, so I should make myself available. So interview date came, and I went for the interview. They were impressed. Actually, they were impressed, and they were like, okay, they were going to send my appointment letter and everything to my mail. So I was there, and I wasn't hearing from them. So I emailed them, and they told me to get in touch with the man they gave a slot to, which is my family member in question, my family friend in question. So I called him, and he was like, I should come to his office. I went to his office, and he was like, so... I have gotten a job for you. What are you going to do for me in return? Actually, at that moment, I didn't know what to think. So I pretended as if I didn't understand that question. So he asked me that in case I come for this job, my place is very far from where the, the job location is. So how am I going to transport myself? And I told him that if I have to move here, then I have to rent an apartment around. And he was like, good. He's giving me another offer. Right now, he has given me a job. So he's going to rent an apartment for me so that I give him his request. And I asked, what was his request? And your guess is as good as mine. He said he wanted sex. I looked at him like, really? I can't do that. I mean, I know this man's wife. I know his children. Even if, if, I, didn't know, if I didn't know his wife and children, if I didn't know his family, my morals... My self-worth are one of my topmost priorities in life. I'm not going to trade sex for a job. No, I won't do that. So I told him to hell with the job. And he was like, you're going to stay at home for that long? You know how the job market? I'm like, no, I'm not going to sleep hungry. So it's, it's fine. I went home and I wept. In my whole life, it was the first time this was ever happening to me. I wept like a baby. I couldn't get over it. I couldn't eat. I couldn't do anything. Because my expectations about this job were were so high, <laughs> it was it was high. But I had I had to move on. I had to choose between either I give in to the man's request for the job, or I forget about it. So I forgot about the job. And few months later, I got another job. So I don't know. I don't know why why people powerful people suppose powerful people in society do that. When you want to employ someone, look at what they can do for you or the qualifications they have. But you don't you don't exploit sex from them because you want to employ them because you see that they are desperate for a job welcome ladies and gentlemen to another um, episode of the two mad beans podcast the only platform where we are unafraid to talk about the issues people are afraid to talk about my name is dufie and um, i'm excited to be here to talk about something very interesting that we've been putting on the back burner for a very long time the two sound bites um you heard before are from two people two victims who have experienced sexual exploitation on the job market. So today we're going to talk about sex, sexual exploitation and get um, diverse opinions and views. I've been joined by Kojo mm-hmm. and Victoria. How are you guys? I, You're fine. I did. What's <laughs> yeah. up? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm blessed. Okay, sure. So sexual exploitation. Hmm. Let me start with you, Victoria. You are the lady and Kojo is the guy who's going to, you know, be keeping us on yeah, track. Yeah, you're playing <laughs> right. the try here. Yeah. Yes, true. So, um, has the sexual exploitation of women on the job market been that serious? Yes. Mm-hmm. I think it ha- No, I know that it has been serious mm-hmm. because we, we, we have a lot of women in our society and in our community who go through these things mm-hmm. from our mothers, our sisters, our aunties. Absolutely. You know? So sometimes we we don't even pay attention, much attention to it because we think it's a flimsy issue, but it's not. It's a very serious thing that has to be looked at. Mm-hmm. Because this is this is a case whereby uh, our future, our integrity is at stake mm-hmm. and we have to do something about it. So it's a very serious issue that has to be dealt with. I think it's, it's really serious. I do agree with you about Kojo. From a man's point of view, what do you think sexual exploitation against a woman is? I think using a position to 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 sleep with a, a lady mm-hmm. for her to get a position in any job. Mm-hmm. And uh, so yesterday, mm-hmm. it's an open secret. Everybody knows that people 
people going for jobs and boxes are asking for sex and all that. Yeah. But I didn't really pay attention to start mm-hmm. stuff. Cause I always felt like you always have a choice in life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To either accept or not. Yeah. But from hearing from my friend who sent me a voice note and saying that she gave in something I just something just died in me. Mm-hmm. I felt this is serious. Wow. It's, it's extremely serious. Well, this is a person that sat in the same class with in JSS, and she was one of our best minds. Wow. One of our best minds. Like she, she was supposed to to reach this higher height in life. Yes. Yeah. But she has gone through a lot of challenges, and she told me some of the challenges some years back. And hearing this for the first time yesterday, something died in me that whoa, this is serious than I thought. Absolutely. And I didn't really care, like being honest with the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I didn't really care about women being exploited on the job market. I always feel like there's always a choice for you to do, mm-hmm. either to accept or not. But with her, from everything she said and I heard yesterday, I felt if I was in that position, I would have done the same thing. You yeah. must have done the same, yeah. absolutely. Now, um, let me ask you, Vic, um, how's, have you ever experienced this? And if you have, how's the experience, you know, you going for a job and some man somewhere is asking for, for a long things like this? Oh, I have. Wow. And I didn't experience it on my search for job, mm-hmm. but I experienced it after I got the job. Whoa. <laughs> yes. And we were working. But I felt that, or I, I felt that the, the amount of work that I'm putting into the company, I deserve a salary increment. Yeah. Now that's where the problem started. Wow. Yes. Every and it was a male-dominated company. The name of the company is, with, is withheld. It's a male-dominated company. Mm-hmm. Most people that I worked, I, I, I was working with, were men and older people. They were not even my age mates. So I took my request to the account office, to the HR, mm-hmm. and then to the, I was forwarded to the account office. And then the account, the, the man I was working directly with, my immediate boss, and then my, the account manager, both asked for sex. Wow. wow. Yes. My, 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 immediate, my immediate manager thinks that if I, he says that help me so that I also help you. Rub my back and I rub yours. Yes. <laughs> I knew what he meant. Mm-hmm. You know? I, I, I knew what he meant, but I was processing the whole thing. I, I just pretended as if I didn't hear that. Yeah. Because I couldn't believe it. This is somebody, when we started working, I had, I had so much trust in him. You know, we're working together. I was like his PA. So he sends me on errands. I trust him. Mm-hmm. Whenever something is going wrong in the company, I tell him everything. He was like a father figure. Wow. So for him to say something to me like that... That must have been disappointing. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Wow. So I, I just brushed it off because I didn't know who to tell. Wow. You know, I didn't know who to... I was disappointed, so I didn't know who to tell. I was wondering that if I take this issue to the HR, if I take this issue to the managing director, how is it going to happen? How are they going to handle it? How are mm-hmm. they going to mm-hmm. deal with it? Mm-hmm. Am I going to be sacked for talking? Mm-hmm. And this was a case whereby I was a breadwinner. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I can't afford I can't afford to stay at the house because who is going to feed me? In your family. In my family. Okay, now let me chip this in now. I'm seeing Vic, fortunately for me, and she comes across as a very prim and proper, you know, mm-hmm. well brought up lady. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you, Kojo, do you think a lady's appearance can, you know, cause a man to um, make sexual advances towards her? Yeah, yeah, it can cause a man, an indisciplined man, to have that notion. I like that. Indisciplined. Please yeah. underline that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A disciplined man wouldn't want to employ based on uh, his, his appetite for sex. Because that's his job. We have to get money. And employing the best minds brings money. Not people who are actively involved in sex. Right. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. if you want to if you want to do sex stuff, then be a prostitute. Yeah. You get in oh, it. Yes. In a porn so, hub, yeah. you know? mm-hmm. Basically. So business is business. Mm-hmm. Pleasure is pleasure. Mm-hmm. We don't miss the two. Right. True. Exactly. You get in it. Mm-hmm. And and if sometimes I wonder why businesses in Ghana, the young businesses, they tend to look up to the big businesses outside. And these businesses have standard. Absolutely. They have standards. An yes. organizational climate. They yes. have standards. So the professionalism, yes. exactly. and, you know, ethics yes. that exactly. we need yes. to follow. Exactly. Yes. So if the head is not is not thinking smart mm-hmm. or is not yeah. acting disciplinary, mm-hmm. 
the rest of the people down there will do the same. Absolutely. Yeah. Because it breathes so fast. Mm -hmm. that when the boss does something, people get to know, okay, he's into this. Yeah. So I can also do the example. same thing. Yeah. Getting it. Absolutely. You guys are absolutely right. But we've been talking about the woman, the woman. Do you think sexual exploitation is gender, gender biased? I, I think so. Mm -hmm. Because the reason why I'm saying I think so is because men who are also sexually harassed at the workplaces are looked at, whenever they talk about it, they are looked at as weak men. Mm -hmm. Which is wrong. That's True. a valid point, yeah. It's, it's, it's wrong. We, sh we don't have to condone that. We don't have to accept that a man is weak for complaining that a woman is sexually harassing him. I mean, such women, if if a man is, is touches her waist right now, Hell is going to let loose. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So why, why are we are we accepting it for the man? Why are we saying that the man is weak for talking about it? Yes. He's not weak. Yes. Yes. And let me just chip this in. Sexual exploitation is an, an abuse, right? Yes, it is. And an abuse, any form in which it comes, is barbaric, is inhumane. Yeah, yes. True. It's uncalled for. Yes. So whether it happens to the man or the woman, we need to be able to not, it. you know, put on the back burner but eradicate it yes. we can this yes. is a matter of ethics yes. we are all brought up in homes we are taught what's right and what's wrong mm -hmm. so collectively I think we can put a stop to this because yes. it is like we spoke about depression some time back mm -hmm. on this podcast mm -hmm. this is something that can easily throw somebody into depression exactly. a yeah. lifelong one yes. yeah true Yes, and it's spoiling lives, you mm -hmm. know. Somebody might be mad on the streets, not because of anything. Perhaps they've gone to a situation like this, yeah, and their self-esteem mm -hmm. yeah. has mm -hmm. been washed mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. yes. And let me shift this in. What you just said is like an extreme scenario, mm -hmm. but let's look at sexual exploitation in the job market, yes. at the workplace. Yes. Let's say I'm applying for a job, mm -hmm. and then whoever is supposed, to, uh, whoever is giving me the job, is asking for sex. Mm -hmm. Does he or she know the my contribution, like the, the gift I have, what I could bring to the table? Yeah, the content of your character, yes. your brain. Yes. Yeah. Like I have so much to offer. True. But you are you are sucking me, you are you are sucking me with 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 sexual requests, with yeah. stuff like this. Yeah. And and it's ending so much visions and and whatever. Like people people yeah. have People have visions. They want to. People have something that they want to do. They mm -hmm. they want to improve. They want to become better. Yeah. But you are not allowing. You are you are you are preventing somebody to grow. Yes. Yes. You are being a stain in someone's yes. road. Now, Kojo, do you think that these exploiters they've been untouchable? We've not dealt with them enough. Oh yeah, yeah, that one is true. Even with the Me Too movement for, yeah. now, which is not in the job market, but generally. Generally, you know? in Ghana, I can't talk for Ghana because I stay in Ghana. Yeah. Ghana from <laughs> from the big powers we know in Ghana in politics in the big places and all that it's it's like a click mm -hmm. it's like when when they don't buy into me if yeah. you don't give my my desires mm -hmm. they blacklist you mm -hmm. they call their friends yo this mm -hmm. lady blah 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 you mm -hmm. can get a job right. wow. it happens a lot mm -hmm. you shouldn't wow. even pretend that like yeah. it, it happens a lot and this is so cool for a lady to sleep with these people because you also get power True. You're getting it. They, they, we have another another breed of women too who buy into sleeping with them. Sleep they don't care, and they, they they possess so much power. Yeah. Because the men they sleep with also have power. Yes. True. And they have become the benchmark of success in mm -hmm. society now. So anything, any any time you mention names of female successful females, when you mention a lot of them, you get to know mm, this thing. These people, their success is some way be. They might have slept their way yeah, through. through. Yes. Mm. But they are, they are only people we are seeing. Mm -hmm. Yes. You, you're getting yes. it. Because the power that may are giving them the power to have their way through life easily. So it's, it's extremely tough. Wow. Now, Vic, in your circumstance, did you consent to it? No, I didn't consent to it. I walked out. I walked out of a job. Wow. I walked out even without a, without a resignation letter. Because mm -hmm. I felt they didn't deserve it. Okay, now, when you experienced that, did you know that there are some laws governing you know, sexual exploitation as a crime or something that should have been the illegal. Did you I know that? Knew, I knew there were laws governing, mm -hmm. but then I asked myself, am I ready? 
to take this up? Yeah. Do I walk away? Can I pay a lawyer? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Do I walk away? Do I stay? What do I do? I'd rather walk away because I need my peace. Wow. And I'm not going to gamble with my peace. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to to take this. Like I'm not going to sell my integrity. That's what I told myself. Wow. So I'll just I'll just walk away. I mean, big ass on that, but Kojo, do you think women truly know the laws concerning... For some funny reasons... Yeah, social um, exploitation. Ghanaians know so much laws. We, we know laws, this, that, 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 that. But how to go through the whole process, we don't. We don't know. And, and the whole system is so messed up that you don't know who to approach first. Okay, I've been to this situation, like Vic... Who do I see first? Mm-hmm. When you go to that person, the person is demanding for money. The person is not putting integrity down that, oh, this might be my sister or my daughter. Mm-hmm. Let me take this case up. Yeah. I won't take her money. Yeah. Let me push this forward. Yeah. The person go like, oh, it's, it's not new. Exploiting a man on the job field. It's been there since, since, since. Yeah. I need my money. So pay my money. Let me, let me follow the case. True. And we have judges who postpone cases for like five years straight up. Because the person you're fighting has money. Yes. End of the day, you give up on the case. Mm-hmm. And lawyers take money for every every sitting. True. True. And you won't even go and work and feed yourself. And how, how much money do you have to go and fight the laws? Yeah, true. Let me add this. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I, I used to work in an NGO. Oh, right. And I'm not going to mention the name of the NGO, but um, the lady in question, the owner of the NGO, um, I and her and a colleague of mine and then another child in the NGO we encountered this problem and the problem was that one of the children keeps talking about her being sexually harassed wow the NGO okay I'm not going to mention where the NGO is but yeah for privacy reasons yeah. we keep the places and some of the people anonymous yes. you know so she says she gets sexually harassed whenever she goes to the beach the and beach? The beach. Because wow. they live closer to the beach. So whenever she says it, she laughs. So we we were skeptic. We were like, is she kidding? Is she serious? We didn't know. So we decided to ask her more. And then we got to the bottom of the matter. Mm-hmm. When we got to the bottom of the matter, we forwarded the issue to our boss. And then we took it to the police station. Now, what I'm, I'm, I'm saying this to highlight what Kujo was saying mm-hmm. based on a lawyer is going to waste your time and mm-hmm. it's, it's a whole institution, it's, it's a giant. Mm-hmm. Are you ready mm-hmm. to fight? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we took this thing to the police and then, you know what the police told <laughs> You know what the police told my boss? He said, you are wasting your time. <laughs> he said, you are wasting your time. Wow. With this issue. It's a normal thing here. No, that's what we need. It's not normal. It's not normal for me as a woman to go and look for a job, yeah. try to make a livelihood, yes. and for me to be exploited sexually and mm-hmm. call that normal. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's below the belt, and we should all... I mean, be, my boss was in shock. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, she was. Mm-hmm. she cried. Wow. She cried. How can you say this is normal? It's not normal. It's not. It's not normal at all. And usually it comes from people that you trust, people you look up to, your mentors, wow. people, who, people who, are, who are like the heads of society mm-hmm. are doing this. Look at, look at the lady we listened to who said her dad's friend, a family member. Yeah. It's, wow. it's devastating. Wow. Funny enough, on my way here, I was in a church and then on the radio... There was this entertainment news, right? And then they mentioned the name of a producer, I think a Nigerian one. And the man said, you know, in line with um, these sexual grades that have been, you know, mm-hmm. circulating, the man said, actually, point of correction, some women too sexually harass us as men. And that he gave some ladies some movie roles, right? And they said, oh, we want to thank you in a special way. So in this special Can way, you imagine that? Yeah, this woman walks to this man's house and then, you know, forces him to have something to wear. Now, what do you think about women like this? Also putting men in a similar situation. The, the, I, f- I can't blame the women much. These days, as Vic was even saying about the policeman, I don't even blame the policeman. Mm-hmm. See, the thing is so messed up that when you try to fight the system, 
you win one stage, you lose so many stages. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The policeman is being sincere here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He should be. He should be neutral in cases. He should tell you the truth. Go to that, 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 that. But he's helping you guys in a way, because mm -hmm. he knows that him, he can take on the case. But are you willing to go to court for like five years, ten years? To the end. Yes. To the end. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't want you guys to lose your money. Sure. Your sure. comfort, your peace, your time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see. So the whole thing is messed up that these ladies who art movies, they look up to other ladies before coming to the industry. Mm -hmm. They get closer to these ladies and they tell them that I did this so I stepped this, this person, this is their train, mm -hmm. this is how yeah. you get it's through the whole thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not also their fault. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no one inspiring them. Yes. True. And it's, it has become a norm in so many places that before you reach this top, you have to sleep with so many men to get there. They call it and sacrifices. Nobody, and nobody cares. Wow. That's what they call it. Wow. So it's about we human beings as Africans, Ghanaians, just saying to ourselves that out of the lot, everybody is saying it is not it's normal. For me, Koji, it's not normal. Yeah. That's why I've taken upon myself to discuss this issue on two Madness podcast. Mm -hmm. It's not normal for me because one day I might have a daughter. Yeah. Yes. And say, I'm me, I'm dead. And somebody is exploiting my because me for my life and exploit my daughter, I'll kill you. <laughs> I'm going to pull that trigger. Yeah, I'll kill you. Oh, cool. So suppose I'm dead and somebody yeah. is doing this to my daughter. Mm -hmm. How would I feel in my grave? Yeah. yeah. You're getting yeah. it. Somebody has gone through school for all these years. Is she going to yeah. give in? Um, give in or... You see, see my friend who said she gave in. Wow. She has gone to school all her years. She has been to a lot of challenges in her life. And she has the experience to do something. Mm -hmm. And something happens and she has to buy her way out with sex. True. Yeah, true. That that is just devastating. But as you are saying, what are some of the mechanisms that we can put in place to combat this, you know, very unnecessary and inhumane habits that some people have towards, you know, employing people or even helping others? Vic, what do you think we can do as a people collectively? I think we we need to listen to each other. We need to help each other by reporting them. I don't know if really, uh, I don't know if really the government is going to help. It's, it's, it's not, um, it's not guaranteed. Yeah, but I think somebody needs to take up the gauntlet and say I'm advocating towards it strongly. Mm -hmm. I know, I, th that's one thing. I feel like, like Kojo is saying, there are some people who are, who have done these things to get to the top, and that's what we see. And so these people can't even advocate against it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get it? Because as we mentioned in the course of the conversation, you would report them but they'll be back in their houses exactly. having a good time yes. the exactly. next day. Yes, so I feel like collectively as a people, we need to institutionalize advocacy yes strongly and we need to unite good we need to unite on the on the, on a goal mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on an aim because without unity we won't achieve anything mm -hmm. we won't go forward we need to we all have to be one we we don't have to um we don't have to be uh, win and ha win and ha yeah because mm -hmm. we won't yes. win that's the concept of the broom mm -hmm. Unity. Yes. Unity, absolutely. Unity. I also, I also believe mm -hmm. that, see, we all need money. Yes. We can't change how people think. We can never change how somebody thinks. Yeah. And the laws are not going to always work in some of us, our favors. The, the less laws have loopholes. Yeah. So yeah. I believe that a young person, you have, to, you have to learn skills. Yeah. Acquire knowledge. See, you can also set up a business. You can start small. It's difficult starting business, but you can start small, grow your business. And you are a quintessential example you, you can start of something. yourself. Yes. Just yeah. let's learn. When you learn so, you have to learn so much. Learn any skills. You, you can learn any skills now on internet. You can go to somebody who knows. And it shouldn't even be one. Yes. I mean, so learn many. as many as you can because mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. never know which it's, one. Yeah. Exactly. True. True. So you can learn skills, acquire knowledge, start something, grow it. The energy that you're putting into somebody's work, the same person wants to sleep with you. Put yeah. the same energy into your own work. Mm -hmm. It make it grow. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're getting it. So when you won't grow and people come there for employment, you can also teach them Yes. True. how to also grow this yes. along the line. Mm -hmm. So that we can also, if you can't find the old system, you have to create a new system. Yes. The new system is you setting that standard. Mm -hmm. That, Kojo, I'm setting up a business. When mm -hmm. people come, I'm not going to sleep with them. I want them to grow. When they grow to a point, I tell them, okay, this time you're pro. 
set up your own. Yeah. Then we start changing ourselves. Yeah, mm-hmm. changing the narrative. Mm-hmm. You know? Exactly. So let's yeah. go a new system by learning new mm-hmm. skills. There's so much resources on the internet, on YouTube, on Linda.com, like a whole lot. Wow. Just devote your time and learn. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, listening to us, Victoria and Kojo have given us very good closing remarks. Um, sexual exploitation is one word, ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And we need to say no towards it. Yes. And um, like um, Vic says, solidarity is very important. Be there for people. Listen to what they've got to say. This has been the Two Mad Beans podcast my name is Dufi. I don't even think I mentioned my name from the beginning because I was so angry. You know? <laughs> but then my name is Dufi, and you'll be hearing more of me on yeah, this yeah, you have podcast. So um, stay tuned. Do send your questions, your queries, um, your experiences to yeah. us via our social media platforms. Yes. And um, in one word, stay safe and be happy because there's no other way. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Bye. 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 <laughs> So don't judge me by my clothes Some days I roll up in a hood and a track